This is In Boot Camp, episode 12, halfway on Sunday, April 7th, 2019, with your host, Matthew Petchel and Ryan Rampershead. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash IB12. Hey, 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 it's that time again. We're halfway. Yes. So on Saturday, our student success coordinator brought in a huge box of donuts, plus another huge box of donuts, plus tons of bananas, which nobody ate, and then some donut holes. You know, I could see how nobody would want bananas. Yeah, like these under, right? Like, I mean, they were still green. Like, I wasn't okay. going to even well, consider that, them. That makes sense. Then. But these, not, they're not one of those micro finger bananas, but they weren't like, you know, big bananas. They're like yeah, little yeah. green bananas that just look like, um, don't eat. Yeah. Eat, eat the sugar coated donut with the jelly and custard in the middle. It's much better it choice. It probably tastes like banana too. No, it, would, it, did, it was really good. I had one of the red jelly ones. I don't, I don't know my donut flavors. I'm not a donut person. But all I know is we were halfway and I got a delicious donut to celebrate the halfway. See, I got so good at practicing halfway through this fruit camp. Like I've been working on it for like two weeks now. Or three even, I think. Three even now. Yeah, no, that was a um, historical incident there. Um, we should move on from the halfway mark, though, and talk about what you've been learning recently. Because you've kind of moved on from just plain old JavaScript. And you've actually started exploring some other technologies. As you know, there are three class periods a week. And the first two of them are just kind of like um, just catch up. Like we're just practicing what we already know and, you know, Node and everything else. And you know how everything builds off everything. So we're playing with a little bit of HTML stuff and doing a little bit of that. And then on Saturday, we started the MySQL world. Now, this is this is a big deal because, you know, it's one thing to know HTML. You can do it in a browser. You can do CSS in a browser. It's another thing to do JavaScript, which you can do in a browser, but there's like some logic and some, you know, actual thinking that goes into it. There's a little bit more of a step to actually install Node on your computer and run JavaScript out of the browser. But this, learning MySQL, is a totally another world. It is not like any other programming language experience you've ever had up till now. Is that right? I would totally agree with that. Because you can run code in different orders. You can drop stuff. If you try to run your whole file again, it will f- give you errors. Like, you've already created this table. You've already done that. Before we even get to there, let's talk about running my SQL. Yes. And so, t- can you remind me again which operating system you use? I use the one and only, the only operating system anyone should ever use is Windows 10. Windows 10. Okay. So, Matt is running Windows. Now, tell me about your um, hours and hours of agony. Ah, it begins back in January. <laughs> so, we were given pre work to do before boot camp even started, and it was to install the uh, MySQL workbench from the Oracle Dolphin people. And also, after you do that, install MAMP. And so, I know I got my workbench working because um, I, you know, how it, it shows you like test connection, like. On port 3006, I have a little... Yeah, yeah, it works. Well, I never went... I never looked back. I kept on moving forward down the list. I put on MAMP and stuff, and it's like, use the next continuing port. So 3007 is MAMP, 3006 is, you know, workbench for the Dolphin people. Class, Saturday morning, I went to my workbench, copied all the stuff, tried everything. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And then so I'm like, eh. Who knows? I mean, well, I mean, it's been like a couple months. Let's get the new version. Like, I'm like, well, okay. So I, I installed it, reinstalled it because, you know, in Slack, they said, hey, if you didn't do the pre-work, just you guys, here's another link to it. Uninstalled everything, reinstalled it. Even that didn't work. Didn't work. So I was never actually able to create, like, even right now, I can't. I'm unable to create anything on port 3006. I still don't know why, but... I just opened up MAMP and went to my workbench and said, look, on port 3007, so I have to use MAMP to get it going to view it. That is a wonderful story about Windows not being the operating system to develop on. And Saturday's class, well, I mean, I also, I messed with the TA for like 15 minutes. I I mean, the TA was trying to copy the settings and stuff because I was one of the first persons, like when he said, did anyone have trouble? My hand shot right up, like, give me a TA, please. A lot of people aren't really enthusiastic when they mess up, and they don't want everyone to know they screwed up and stuff. But I, I, I hate being stuck. I, I get, you know how well, I am I, with I, stuff. I know, um, I know you. Because you were um, earlier this week, you're helping me dog, debug a um, object problem I was yes. having. Um, I was making an API call, and I couldn't find the data I was looking for. It was and... that was that was a bad API, in my opinion. Yeah, I Spotify. It was a little bit verbose. Yes. Yeah. 
TA came and helped me, uh, and he had a MacBook Pro. Oh. And he was like, yeah, Matt, you're doing everything right. I just don't know what's wrong. And he walks away. <laughs> he did the right thing. Like, like the, the, the joke that I told Matt before he started his boot camp is... Okay, so you're using Windows. You're, that means you're going to go through hours and hours of agony. I said that to him. Then he tried to install Docker on Windows, and then it prompted... Give me 99 more dollars! For Windows Pro, yeah. 10 Pro. And then... Yeah. <laughs> just, just just a disaster. And so Matt eventually did realize that hours and hours of agony is a true story. Yes, and our professor did make a comment on this uh, right before lunch. He's like, oh, because... Before lunch, we did almost nothing. Like, we, we were just everyone, he wanted everyone just to have test connections. So that was like the first two hours of class was right. just getting there. And he's like, hey, you guys, raise your hand if you're having trouble at all today. Keep your hand up if you're using Windows. And nobody took their hand down. Yep. Huh. Funny thing is he said. And then he sent us all out to lunch. I, I like your professor. I should, we should be friends. Yeah. Um. You s- you know somebody who knew him on the LinkedIn um, cool. from the lead pages. I know you looked at that up one I, time. I've forgotten it instantly. Well, that's the beautiful thing about LinkedIn is you can just see everyone you know and then do it again. Yeah. So uh, let's let's get into some of the actual things here. So we, we've gotten about, you know, installation and stuff. But let's talk about Workbench. I had a little problem, and that's not just with Workbench. So I have a 4K screen on my laptop, yeah. and some Windows applications kind of do this weird ghosting thing um mm-hmm. i mostly see it with dialogue boxes like like uh, alert like do you want to make changes to the system do yeah. you want to give access um like you know like that windows defender like the firewall yep. thing like, do you want to give access to public networks um like those little dialogue boxes from other things that aren't windows sometimes look really crappy on 4k mm-hmm. um and the workbench was just like that yep it um that's or made my eyes you. bleed um, but the good news is, is Visual Studio Code allows you to, you know, run queries right in the thing or you run everything if you install the extension. Yeah, that's really interesting. I, I didn't I've never used code for that purpose. Uh, I personally do not use uh, Workbench very often. Um, so what does a professional in the field use? Well, so Workbench has I have used Workbench only because it can it sometimes understands my SQL databases better than other tools because Oracle likes to play by their rules and not the rules. What I use is actually something called Data Grip. Ooh. So yeah. Data Grip is a JetBrains product. It's actually, um, if you pay for IntelliJ Ultimate, it's integrated by default, but you can also just pay for IntelliGrip, which I believe is 70 bucks. but it's... Uh, I hope it's not a year. I don't know for sure. Um, even if it is, it doesn't matter. Well, because like, like you're sublime an and stuff. Like it's, it's that's, a, that's a perpetual license. But yeah. yeah, and I, I would, I would never buy something that was a year subscription. I don't think. Uh, when you're working for, for you myself, when you're working, you don't like, care. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, the other thing that's really cool about uh, Data Grip is that it works across different database types. So you can use it for Postgres. You can use it for Mongo. You can use it for MySQL. You can use it for everything. Wow. So it's your one-stop shop then. It is. And so like, it's it's nice that the interface is uniform. It makes sense. It's easy to use. Um, it has connectors for everything that's important. That's what I typically use. Now, when we were when we were cheaper than we should have been, we were using dBeaver. Oh, was it, is it free to use then? I believe dBeaver is free to use. There may be a paid version, but we never looked at the paid version. So one of our tools we've been using is MAMP. Uh, that has a pro version too, but mm-hmm. we haven't had to use any. Yeah. Just, I mean, it, it For works. basic use, you don't need to do anything too fancy. Yeah. Because we're not deploying anything. We're just doing it for our homework. Well, and, and it's stuff. all local. Yeah. Yeah. So why are you using MAMP, by the way? Like, doesn't ZAMP do that? Well, okay, okay, okay. okay. Yes, I have ZAMP on there already because I wanted PHP my admin. It looks better. Well, I know I never did anything with it, but I've all Apache stuff. Like uh, when I made my first LAMP server, like back in junior high and stuff, I didn't. I mean, I just wanted the fancy index, just followed the guide and stuff. But PHP my admin makes sense. It's easy it to does. use, and it's it's timeless, really. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I do want to iterate that this is not the the gal next to me's computer looked just fine using this. Uh, she she has a regular 1080p monitor yeah. and stuff. It's just some kind of weird bug, and I've noticed it with a few other things how, why it looks so funny. And I it, maybe there's a way to fix it, but no, I don't. No, there's no way to fix it. Buy a Mac? No, I mean just don't use Workbench. And I have the tools not to use it. No. Right. Um. So let's talk about other things that you've learned. So you you wrote tables here. 
Tell, tell me the oh, story about that. Yeah, uh, just tables and how you create them and how you can insert into them. And then we started touching on joining tables. Like, so if you wanted, like, um, so the, the thing we wanted was we wanted to join anything by this author to this table and stuff. And then we had, like, three tables at the end. And it's just, um, we could tell everyone was burnt. And he just pretty much dismissed us after that. Right. Uh, but, but at the end of the day, everyone had working. Uh, we were all running test code and doing everything else, working through the examples and the example problems. And for a first day in a new branch of thought, it, it worked pretty good, I thought. That's good. Yeah. Um, t- going into the SQL lifestyle, that's the wrong word. SQL unit? Yeah. Yeah. Going into it is can be tricky because it's a very different mindset. Yeah, and I have a question for you. Yeah, go for um, it. So you know how every language has, you know, things everyone does and stuff. When I see every uh, example, because, I mean, I wasn't wasting the TA's time for everything. I was looking up a lot of stuff. It's yeah. all in caps. Yeah. But it's not case sensitive. No. So when I when I do stuff, it's all lowercase. Um, And so uh, my SQL workbench has an autocorrector thing. So you start typing in, like, drop table or yep. something. It autocompletes to lowercase. Yeah. But the convention I've seen everywhere is uppercase. Well, what, what's up with that? So, um, I don't know. When you write it, do you do caps lock or? So I wouldn't be surprised if some older databases like DB2 or like a super old version of Oracle DB, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they required, you know, back in the 80s, 90s and prior to now, uh, required uppercase keywords. So usually... I will do whatever somebody else has already started doing. I personally don't care if they're in uppercase or lowercase. Well, because from what I've tried, it doesn't care either. It doesn't care. Um, sometimes um, some function names are actually in uppercase, and they were they the function names were written in uppercase, and function names are case sensitive. So in those cases, I guess maybe like it makes sense. Yeah, but usually I don't run into it. Um, normally, I'm not writing SQL directly. Usually, I'm using some kind of composition tool, so it's not always a big deal to me. And so, you've been on many projects now that you're a fancy pants developer in the real world. Yep, fancy How pants. do you still use SQL all the time? I very, very rarely use no SQL in any capacity. Um, okay, because I just remember back when you were in college and stuff, you're all crazy about the Postgres and all the other. Oh stuff yeah, I and... love Postgres. Postgres is actually what I use. Okay. Yeah. I, um, you know, a lot of uh, Mongo used to be really like the bleeding edge of hype. Ooh. I, bleeding it, edge. It, it, it seems like it hasn't been as novel lately. Um, there was a good joke on Twitter that I wrote the other day. Uh, you can read my Twitter to find out at randomr on twitter.com. Um, but basically it goes like this data model makes no sense. Is that why no sequel makes sense? And so the reason that that's a joke is because most data sets are relational in some way or another. You have a box of products. Well, who sent the products? They're related to whoever sent them. Who's receiving the products? Well, the the box is related to who's receiving it. What's in the box? Well, the box is now related to what's in the box. Like, it's all relational in some way. Now, if you store it denormalized and decentralized or, you know, whatever... You know, maybe it's not as relational, but it's always relational. Hmm. Um, and actually, so one of the cool things that Postgres lets you do is it lets you have sort of a hybrid. You can actually have a JSON field be whatever you want. Shove the data in. Who cares? But any fields that are actually relational and that you want to do joins on, you can have those part be part of the table as regular column fields. So you kind of get the best of both. And you can go back and change it if you wanted to yep. without breaking everything? You sure can. So... That's going to be nice. It is nice. Well, because you know that sometimes people want to feature to something, you know, the last week that you were working on the project. Surprise! And, yeah. Yes, I am fully aware of those days. So, yeah, it, it's really good. So I will look forward to hearing more about your joining and sequeling adventures. Again, it's it's not something you learn in a day or a week. It's something you learn over many experiences. And- so I started Googling a little bit on my own and stuff, and one topic that keeps on coming up was protecting against injection, because I guess it's really You bad. don't yeah. say. I mean, I guess it's also really easy to tell. If, if All you have to do is put in a single quote in a search box to tell. You bet I do. And um, it's... 
Yeah. For your next group project. Next group project. Better be careful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, because you uh, didn't like our fire base at all. No, 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 not at all. It says the person who literally used open keys, no less, to do whatever they wanted. I, is it wrong to have faith in the world? Yes. (laughs) Okay, fine. Uh, Okay, let's talk about Node next. Oh, um, yeah, we just, we learned no revolutionary concept. It was just practicing, like, so we uh, we were all told to start from scratch and um, just, they gave us a little thing where, okay, take from the take command line argument whether you want to look up a show or look up a movie, uh, or no, it was an actor, um, and then we used one API to Axios grab um, whatever. You were doing they did. that um, command line stuff again. Yep, yep. And um, I still find that to be very fascinating. That's how we got it. So our professor went on a huge rant and stuff like you know um if we had to, if we we're all used to using node and stuff you can use node to you know do sql and stuff we don't have to start working the uh workbench and stuff for sure and like why didn't we start with something familiar was his exact rant to the tas because i sit by the tas because i like it and help good very good uh, well if i get stuck on something i can literally turn around like hey alex fix this for me and then he's just like it's fixed <laughs> i love that feature um so I, uh, I I I personally am not a fan of server side node. I, I'm not a big fan of it, at least. Um, so well, he just wanted us to have some common ground before we got going. It makes total sense, and, th- and that's why I thought it was odd that you were starting with MySQL before Express because it would make sense to me <gasps> yeah. to build an API first with static data that you just literally hard code next week, and then like, hey, now I wanted to actually do something interesting. Then you add a database. But, I mean, he's given the stuff from Trinity Schools, and he has to go off of it. Yeah, I I understand. That's that's too bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, Um. so that project was everyone got in groups of two, on, and if you had two, groups of three, because you know how it, yeah, it, it, it happens. happens. It always happens. Yeah. Um, but no, it was a um, fun little day. I got to do all the typing. It worked in the end, and that was about it. Our home, We had to turn in our homework. Well, last week we didn't have any homework to do, and it was nice. Was that because you finished the group project? Jeez, I'm off by a week. Last week was that. Do you remember the uh, profile? I had to update my profile. Yes, yes, um, yes. Okay. I never did actually push that up. Oh. Um, I should do that when I have a little more content, I guess. Yeah. But I do like the theme I came up with. I agree. Um, Looks good. This is the first time we didn't have something that you could just run. Like, so GitHub Pages is great for hosting things. Yeah. And we but can that's why they just... ask for the little video too, right? Yep. And so uh, this was the first time we had to make a video demoing our stuff because could you imagine having to you know run thirty like just build, install, and everything oh, else? That'd be terrible. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that is why they wanted just a video of us using all four of the commands we had to create for and everything else. Um, and they have not graded it because the TAs were busy putting out fires on Saturday. Yeah, they're probably going to be busy a little while because uh, the MySQL stuff is going to catch up with them. Yeah. And it makes no sense for them to grade on their own. I mean, they're not getting paid at home, so. Right. That is. Go to work to do work. Wow, that's that's an interesting concept. Yeah, we should live by it. <laughs> I actually have some boot camp stuff to talk about. I heard. Um, so uh, earlier last week or so. It came up at work that uh, somebody at one of the clients wanted to sort of talk to some people from various boot camps around the metro area. And I actually did talk to them at a little mini job fair kind of thing. I only talked with about four people or five people. Yeah, I think it was five people. In those five people, three of them were from the U of M boot camp, but from like a previous season. Yeah, I mean, they've done it for like two, three years now. Yeah, so I don't know from when exactly, like if it was the run right prior to yours. We are the 11th iteration. Yeah. And they do a few, a year. I think they do like four a year. Well, they probably now. do your version twice a year. Yeah, and they do the, the, uh, the faster three one week, yep. probably more times a year. Mm-hmm. I don't know exactly when this group was from, and, you know, different people could have been from different things. Um, So that was kind of interesting. But so uh, of, of the three people that, went to it uh three of them i mean two of them went to the three-month version and one of them went to the six-month version so what do the three-month people had to say about it um so all of them fondly talked about their group work and they all remember doing the group work and so we tried to drill in on that a little bit like so we asked um like what was one of the challenges when you were doing group work so like what tell, tell me about those kind of things 
you know, the things that we we got out of them, you know, sort of in a broad, like the three ba- major categories are getting coordination of the tasks, right? So, you know, y- you know, it's a group project. So, like, you go do the API, I'll go do the front end. Somebody else has to go do the database. Somebody else what has to work. Things? Somebody else yeah. has to work on the presentation. Like, what are we working on? What are the tasks? How do we break it up? Um, communication among the team. So, you know, people generally all use Slack and they all understood, but just like the task coordination, getting communication among the team was tricky, they found, because, you know, not everybody was always on and people don't always read their messages and, you know, it can, it can get hard. And then um, the one that I found the most interesting, because it's also one of the most realistic situations, is backfilling technical knowledge. So one of the, or a couple of the candidates um, described to me this concept of, so we, we divvied up the work, and so Bob here was going to do the back end, but it turns out uh, something came up and he couldn't do the back end quite as much as he had wanted to. And he didn't totally know about how to use this particular feature that we needed. So then John backfilled his technical knowledge by helping Bob do the thing that Bob was originally going to do and showing him how to do it. That's uh, it's much better than how our group worked. Right. And so it's it's um a very uh, common occurrence that somebody on your team will be given some work they're not familiar with totally okay and so then the team has to compensate though and typically you can think of that as backfilling the work has already been allocated but you're going to go and fill in some gaps um you know whether by knowledge or by experience or whatever that that was really interesting you know of the five people i talked to only a few of them had had personal projects outside of their classwork the people who had personal projects seem to have a little bit better understanding of what they knew and didn't know yeah i mean the more you get do it the better you understand it so that makes perfect sense yeah so that's why i've encouraged you to begin working on something outside of your classwork so that you have more practice and the other thing that i would say about the classwork thing is you have a week to do your homework nothing gets polished in a week you have two weeks to do your group work maybe and maybe the future ones will be a little bit longer but you know on average two to three weeks like you said, nothing gets polished into in a week, but also it's nothing can even be big enough in a week. It's just not enough time. So having a two month long personal project is way more ideal because now instead of spending like on average, how much do you in hours to spend on homework? Well, um, that can vary. I've spent as much as eight on something okay. that's really broke as much as eight see like that's it like that's one day that's one working well, day. I, I, it's not like i do it one day no but that's one working day in you know industry time and so that's that's nothing like you, nobody can get anything done in just one working day so if you're not spending 40 hours working on something that's what i'm looking for in a personal project like a polished big enough week-long work effort. with a nice read me with a nice read me that would be nice i would appreciate that some of them had some experience that helped them align with um, possible employers at this little mini job fair. So, for example, some of them worked at it like a uh, trucking company, and they were just doing like back back room, back office kind of work. Okay, that would mean they would be good at working at a logistics company, or at least better possibly than another candidate because they already have some industry experience with the terminology and the concepts of uh, logistics. Is there a way to take your existing experience and translate that into uh, immediate benefit, but at least tangential benefit when you start working in the engineering, you know, employment industry? So overall, that was an interesting little mini job fair. (laughs) I um, and who put this job fair on? So one of the clients uh, apparently put this on, and it was sort of strange. And I guess whoever they were really gonna have do their chats with them whatever happened with that person fell through so they asked me to help because everybody knows that i go to all these job fair things and people like talking to me and i'm somewhat interesting (laughs) somewhat (laughs) somewhat um so that was that was cool it's a little little mini job fair kind of thing so that that was cool and like it was only like 10 people like it's very mini job fair. well then it gets personal it does exactly because you at hacker x do you ever even find out anything about each person right so it, it in this one so that there were five rotations, so you got to switch people five times, and then um, there were four, you know, like client group things. Cool. Yeah. So each one was about twenty minutes, so it was, you know, an hour and a half or so. 
it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like fun. It's enough to actually talk to somebody and not have too many questions afterward. Oh, because you saw Hacker X. Like, people lingered for an hour. Right, right. Exactly. So it's uh, it's always an interesting thing. Yeah. So uh, what are your uh, like upcoming plans and learnings? What's, what are, what's, what's the plan these days? Um, this week we have uh, just another node project. It's um, Hangman again. Uh, but only with constructors and all in the node backend instead of... Oh, you know, on the front end. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yep. So it's um, if we did the hangman assignment, which I did, and it works, and everyone can vouch for it. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, hangman. Yeah, I um, I was winking at Matt. Um, yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, so hangman's great. Um, it would be really cool if you looked back on your old hangman code. And you were able to leverage functions that you wrote back then now. Well, uh, I'm probably going to try to do a lot of it from scratch because I've, I've come a long way in just a month or two. Yeah, but you should also look at your old code and laugh at it. So when we were doing the um, portfolio thing last week and yeah. stuff, uh, it just it kind of felt good to look back and see how much I've grown. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, every month is like that. Oh yeah. I mean, every, every day is like that. Uh, over the last week I've been working in Java again after months away from Java. I had to relearn so much stuff, but it was, it's so much fun. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. And when you look back nine years ago and stuff, it's just funny That's, how you do the it's, same. It's stuff. a lot of the same. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. You're right. Oh, I mean, you have Java code from nine years ago. Yeah. It's all the same. This is April, is that right? That means in about a month we'll be going... May 22nd. Yeah, in about a month. That's how time works, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in about a month we'll be going to, what is that called? Uh, Open Source North? Open Source North. So that'll be fun. Uh, any other events planned before then? When do your career services do more career services type work <sighs> with you? I don't know. Um, all I know is on sometime today we're getting a new survey from our student success survey person about asking us to rate them how they're doing and she said keep in mind that this is not what we're doing yet um and so i thought it was kind of weird but she brought in donuts so she's getting a five out uh, of five I, I think she should get a four out of five because donuts are good but those aren't jobs I... it had sprinkles on it okay it was a good donut. I accept. Uh, so, where can we find you on the internet? Oh, you can find me at MatthewPetrel.com, and you can also find me on Twitter at Matt underscore Petrel. And on Slack. Yes, where I ch post in all channels and all workspaces. <laughs> yes. And, of course, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on Twitter at RandomR. And, of course, on my website, RyanRappersLet.com. You can support us on Patreon.com slash TheNexusTV. And you don't need to support us to listen to The Fringe anymore, so please listen to The Fringe. It's wonderful. And you can also leave comments about each episode on reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV. And comments are fun because the posts get automatically created and you can just leave comments. Just they're just it's just easy. Effortless. Just write it, hit go, and it's there. Uh it's been a good one. Yep. See you till next time. Have a good one. Bye. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence.